Hi, I'm Dorcas. In this video, I am going to show you how to use Zoom breakout rooms. I get asked a lot about how to do the Zoom breakout room settings and so on from people while I'm actually on Zoom teaching or facilitating. But unfortunately, I can't really um, answer or show properly because you can't share the Zoom screen settings while you're actually on Zoom. Um, so this video is for you guys who have asked me about the Zoom breakout rooms and the settings. I'm going to show you um, how to set up the breakout rooms and um, then I'm also going to show you a few maybe tips um, that I've learned um, that make things a little bit easier. I think the Zoom breakout rooms aren't perfect, as in I think there's certain things that they should improve upon. So if you have any questions or if even you know of any updates, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you. Also, in this video here, I'm going to stop using the video here that you're watching and I'm going to turn on the video in Zoom. So that will make more sense in a moment. Okay, so here we are in Zoom. Uh, Dorcas, that's me here. John is, um, it's, it's obviously me, but I'm logged in on a different device and Mary is also me logged in on a different device. Um, so at the moment, you can see that John and Mary are co-hosts and I'm the host. Okay, so here you can see I am logged into Zoom. Of course, this is me here on the computer that we're talking on. So I'm the host, so that's me, I'm the host, and you can see my name there. And then there's also John and Mary, and they are normal participants. Um, as you um, uh, can guess, um, these are me, but they're logged in on different devices. So that's why um, it has my picture. So, um, we're going to make breakout rooms. So you can see here my screen is small, but if I drag it out bigger, so I'm just going to drag this out if it works. Come on. Now you can see this breakout rooms there. So I can find breakout rooms there. Or if, for example, I was on a small screen and I couldn't make it bigger, you can see I click more and then breakout rooms. So once you click into breakout rooms, then you can see there's these different options. So Assign automatically means, for example, if I make, let's say, two breakout rooms and I assign automatically, then the system will decide who goes into which breakout room. So if I click create, you'll see here that Mary went into room one and John is in room room two. And actually, I'm saying that wrong because they haven't gone anywhere. For example, Mary and John don't see any change yet. They don't see anything until I click this button. So this is something that you can be getting ready um, maybe at the start or maybe when there's a break, if people are still in the, um, if, if they're still in Zoom, like, but they're just like walked away from their computer. Um, I'm just going to X this, go back into breakout rooms and you'll see that actually, even if it Xs, it remembers your previous settings. So it remembers what you've just done, even though you haven't actually finally clicked the open all rooms. Let's say I've made a mistake. So obviously Xing doesn't bring you back to the beginning. So instead you click recreate and then that brings you back to the previous or the original screen, I should say. Now let's say I'm going to click assign manually. I'm going to leave it as two breakout rooms. I'm going to click recreate. And now you can see if I open these up, you can see that neither um, Mary nor John are in the breakout rooms, but I can now assign. So I can assign John to this room, Mary to this room. Or for example, I made a mistake. Actually, Mary's not supposed to be in this room. I just click her name and deselect and I can add her into this room. And again, Mary and John don't see anything until I click open all rooms. Um, now let's say this time again, I've made a mistake, recreate. And now this time I'm going to click let participants choose a room. And this I found is the best option for, um, or maybe I should kind of take a step back. Um, different breakout rooms are better for different reasons. So for example, if you just want to do something really, really quick to get people to do maybe um, like a quick, like 10 minute exercise, then probably I would use the um, create automatic breakout rooms, assign um, automatically, recreate, and then automatically people will go into whatever rent of rooms. For example, if I had 30 people and if I chose five rooms, then automatically six people would go into each room. So it like, um, it's, it randomly assigns people to the group on a, like evenly. Um, if I was um, working with students who were on maybe a longer um, project, then I um, might let a, a participants choose the room. Um, if I do that and recreate, then you can see, for example, um, now Mary and John, when I click open rooms, they'll be able to choose which room they click into. Now, obviously, um, 
if I'm going to use this method, Mary and John already have to know what group or what room they're supposed to go into. Um, in this case, I will have shared um, maybe a slide at the start to show the breakout room. So I'll say, everybody, find your name on the screen and make a note of the number um, room that you're in. And by the way, even though they're called rooms, I like to rename them. Um, maybe I'm being a bit picky, but I like to name them something like group one, because when I'm referring back to the students when they come back um, because of a task they've done, I'll say, OK, where's group one? Or maybe I might say team one. Um, I don't really like to say who are the people who were in room one. So for me, I always rename them as group one, team one or whatever like this. Um, an annoying thing with Zoom is that you can't rename them after it. So let's say I did team one and room two. So obviously that is a mistake. If I click open rooms, now you can see I can't click. So I mean, I can click, but I can't edit. So I can't click to edit. They're uneditable. The only way for me to unedit is to close the room. And now I can hover over the middle, rename and team two. Um, I should say, by the way, I'm on a Microsoft um, or I'm on a Windows computer here. Um, so it's slightly different, but quite similar for Mac. Um, so let's also click into options now here. So allow participants to choose room. So you can see that um, at any stage I can allow the participants to choose room. Now that might seem a little bit like um, duplication of this option, but it's not. Because let's say, for example, I'm going to go back here and click assign automatically. So let's recreate these rooms. Now John is in room one, Mary's in room two. OK, and as I said, normally I would rename these. So let's rename to team one and team two. And now I'm going to click options and I'm going to click allow participants to choose room. So what's going to happen when I click open all rooms? Mary and John are going to see a pop up inviting, inviting them to join to the respective rooms, as in John will be invited to join team one and Mary team two. But they can choose to go to the other rooms. And that's a nice option that I like to do when you have longer projects. So let's say, for example, you're running like a like a like a week long design sprint or some kind of longer project that's going to take a lot of a lot of time. And you, it's nice, just like in real life, sometimes you want to step away from your group. Like if you're in a real classroom, you like to leave your group and say, hmm, I wonder what those guys are doing over there. Let's go spy on group two or let's just talk to group two and see are they getting the fr same frustrations as we are about this project? Are they hitting the same issues as us? And um, let's just see what they're doing, because I don't know if we're going in the right directions. You know, all those questions that you have in real life, it's nice to be able to walk around the room and just kind of see, oh, yeah, OK, we're on the right track or whatever it is. So I like especially for longer um, group activities, like, for example, if it was going to be like, as I say, a day or over a week or any kind of longer project, you'll know yourself when this makes sense. I like to actually choose this allow participants to choose room. So this way, John will know he's in team one. Mary will know she's in team two. So I can say, Hi, everyone. I'm going to open up the breakout rooms in a moment and then you'll see which room you're assigned to. But then I allow them to choose the room so they can move around later on. So, of course, I'll encourage them to go into team one at the start, but later on they can move around. Um, while we're talking um, about these settings, so that's um, when I like to choose for longer projects, like I say. Allow participants to return to the main session at any time. That means people can come back into the main room. So at the moment here on Zoom where I'm talking here, I'm in the main room. That's where everybody is. And that's where, let's say, I usually might stay. Um, so I like to click that so students can come back and um, and uh, ask any questions. There is a button for them to call you in, but um, it's nice, I think, for them to be able to return to the main session at any time. Um, and then this button here, this is Usually I don't do this um, unless it's like a, um, like a new group of people who I've only been working with a tiny amount of time and who also aren't like um, very Zoom savvy or used to Zoom, I should say. And if I don't have a lot of time. So, for example, let's say um, you have an hour long session and you want people quickly to go into a breakout room just to introduce themselves to like one or two other people and then they're going to come back in like five minutes. Then you don't have any time to waste. So if you click this button, then as soon as you click open the rooms, John and Mary are going to go off. So let's just do this for a practice. So um, sometimes it takes a little bit of time, 
But now I'll see John and Mary, they've gone off into those rooms. So you can see I've been here with you when John and Mary is me on other devices. So you can see I didn't click anything. They've been thrown into those rooms. And the reason why I know that so well is because there's a green dot here and a green dot here. So I can see that's where they are. Um, if, for example, I made a mistake or if Mary uh, needs to go into a different room, I can move her. But generally, I wouldn't do that unless you'd like made a mistake. But like if you do that, then Mary doesn't know what's going on. So I could click to move her into a different room. And because of the button that I've pre previously selected, she's going to be thrown into that room. But it's not really an ideal thing to do. But it's nice to know you can do it if you do like a, like a mistake or something like this. Um, so I'll just close the rooms. When I close the rooms, then you can see here the breakout rooms are going to be closing in 10 seconds because that's what I have it set at. And usually when I close the breakout rooms, um, because people will be forced back into the main room, so you'll see them appear here now with me. There we are. Because they've been forced back, I like to do a broadcast message. So you can see when I open up the rooms, once you open up the rooms, you have this new option here, broadcast message. By the way, if you can't find this, Let's say I can't find it here. More breakout rooms, broadcast message. The broadcast message is quite restrictive, so you can't add a lot of um, stuff um, or a lot of text, I should say. It's almost like an, an old, um, the old Twitter length. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the characters is, but it's short. Um, usually what I do just because um, once you do the broadcast, you can't see what you broadcast anymore. So usually what I like to do is use maybe Notepad or something like this first. So... Oh, so I'll just open up Notepad. Oh, what's going on there? Open up Notepad, and I'm just going to say, "Hi, everyone. Break out rooms will close in whatever At one minute. Finish up your sentences." So it's just like a little notice because you know it's not so nice and it's not like a real life because. With Zoom, I know it's online, but I'm trying to uh, simulate as much as possible as a real life kind of classroom experience where we're actually physically together. You know, so in real life, like your your teacher wouldn't like reef you by the scruff of the neck and, you know, and throw you back into your seat. Like they'd say, OK, everyone, you know, sit back down or whatever. So the idea is I'm trying to do a little bit of that. So if they're beginners, I might say this broadcast. So, for example, I'm going to broadcast this now. So, oops. Big. Oh, I pasted it in twice by accident. So you can see if I broadcast this, it appears on John's screen and on Mary's screen. It doesn't appear on my screen. Um, and that's the annoying thing. Like I said, that's why I like to keep it there in the notepad to notice that I said that. And once I've done that um, um, sort of courtesy message, now I'm going to um, close the room and then they'll have 10 seconds to come back. Um, so they do get a 10 seconds countdown, but I like to do an extra broadcast just as well as that. Um, just, I think it's just a little bit nicer, um, cause you know, sometimes students can get really into a certain subject. Okie dokie. Um, also you can see here the way I have set this at the breakout rooms, they take 10 seconds to close. So I notice other people have 60 seconds to close, um, which means people get a 60 seconds countdown. I prefer to do the 10 seconds countdown, but you can change it up to two minutes as of a maximum. Um, then, um, other options we've mentioned there. Breakout rooms close automatically after 30 minutes. I never do that because I'm always here to make sure the rooms are being closed and also sometimes you might find let's say for example you're giving students a task to do for let's say you told them it was going to be 30 minutes um sometimes a student might come back and message you and say hey listen we're having some problems we need an extra five minutes or we need um or whatever an extra two minutes or something like this you know you have the leeway to say yes that's no problem whereas if you had ticked this button then you wouldn't be able to like um you wouldn't be able to do that basically so i never click that um what else do we have to do oh yeah add a room so let's say we'll go back to here and oh, no, we won't we'll um recreate so we're going back to kind of the original place so let's um assign automatically so again assign automatically and as i told you before i like to rename the the groups or the teams or the rooms to something that makes sense and now i realize i need to add an extra room i can just click down here add new room Team three, because let's say I know more people are coming later that I can assign them to. 
I can always assign people retrospectively to rooms. So you can see once I open up this room. Once I open up the rooms. You're going to be there. Um, I'm just going to actually reset this. Because this doesn't make so much sense how I'm explaining it. Okay, so let's try that explanation again. So I'm going to um, recreate the rooms. So this say I'm going to make two rooms, recreate. And John's not in a room, right? So maybe that's because, um, so obviously I've just deselected that, but I'm simulating maybe John has not arrived yet to the meeting or something like this. So I'm going to open up the room, but you can see at the top, you'll be able to see whoever is not assigned. So that's where I can say, okay, I'm going to manually assign John to room two or um, anyone who joins from Zoom, they can be assigned there. Also, this is a good thing to know because if you're, um, a participant or whoever is with you on zoom here if they lose um connection and they get like kicked out of zoom or they leave zoom and come back then their computer doesn't remember what room they've been in you have to reassign them so that's another option or another reason why the option to allow people to move into breakout rooms is nice otherwise you'll have to manually assign people each time um and let's just close the rooms there as you can see, I each time I open up the rooms, um, the Mary and John are being moved into the other rooms um, because of the button that I am selecting. One more little tip. So basically everything that I've told you is everything that I know about in terms of the Zoom breakout rooms. But just now I'm just moving into my tips. So let's say, for example, here we have our different rooms. What I always do now is I always add an extra room. I always add one room called the water cooler. And I encourage students just to um, use this as a water cooler room. So, or as a water cooler, like the way you would in an office or um, in a classroom. If there's a water cooler, it's where you go and, you know, stand and just chit chat. So the idea is like, if you want to you do chit chatting at any time, um, you can go into the water cooler room. When we go on a break, so if I'm doing a longer day class, um, when I, we go on a break, I'll open up the water cooler room. A lot of people won't use it because I think it's really good to actually stand up and stretch your legs and get outside or move away from the screen when you're doing a day long Zoom course. But a lot of people do like to use it or some people like to use it to click into and have a little chit chat with each other. Um, if I notice that people are using it or if I notice that um, that there is uh, like a group of people who maybe already know each other or a group of people who want to connect then sometimes what I do is I'll actually make more than one water cooler room so sometimes I might just do it some as simple as this um, something as simple as this or I could do for example water cooler um, let's just say for example we know that certain people are interested in different sports and by the way, this is um, what I'm doing on the, on the, when I'm doing this kind of thing, this is what I'm doing on a break. So this is something that's totally nothing to do with, um, you know, doing with, to, to do with the actual course. Um, so let's just say, for example, so we've noticed that we've a lot of people in the class interested in rugby and the other half of the people are interested in poetry. Of course, I'm simplifying it here, but the idea is that they can click into um, the water cooler room that makes sense for them. And, um, this this is something that like you'll know yourself if it makes sense to do something like this um when i have the breakout rooms for people using them to do group projects then i still do the water cooler rooms and if i do it then then obviously i wouldn't name it by like topic but um i might just make different water cooler rooms because sometimes when you're in a group so let's say for example there's six people in your group you might want to have a side chat with maybe someone else from your group so that's where it's nice to have these extra water cooler rooms so you can go off and talk to the other person in your group here and then you can click back into your main group and then the final thing that i do is i always add an extra room for myself and the other facilitator assuming there's another facilitator so um let's say for example i'm going to be um make facilitating with someone called Claire. So hi, Claire, I often facilitate with you. I'm going to call this room CD just for Claire and Dorcas. And I tell the students that that's what that's for. So I it's just handy place if I want to um, click into this breakout room and have a chat with Claire about maybe um, tweaking things coming up or planning things that are coming up the next day um, other than staying in the main room. 
and um, a few more things as well to note when you're in the if I click into this um, so actually let's open up the rooms I'm going to click into here now so I'm joining now one of the breakout rooms of course I'm going to be by myself so I'm in the breakout room I can still see here I can still um, do different things so for example I can still move Mary to a different group not that I advise it is just I can do that I can join uh, any of the rooms and by the way if you're on an Apple computer and um, you don't see join you have to hover over the root name the, the room name or the group name or whatever you've called it and then you see join and then once you click join you can see it ask actually asks you do you really want to join so then you click yes and then for example now I'm going to be moving into the room with Mary I'm just going to click into breakout rooms and I'm going to close the breakout rooms. Pretend I already did a nice broadcast mess broadcast message. Um, so now everyone's going to be forced back to me in the main room in two seconds. Um, I should have said actually with the broadcast, um, I like to say um, it's time up. Um, so for people who are a bit more savvy with Zoom, I like to do this. Um, so when the room is open I like to do this broadcast and then people can move back to the main room of course they're able to move back to the main room because I've pre-selected the option that will allow them to move back to the main room at any time it's just a little bit nicer instead of forcing people back so sometimes I'll do that message and then notice okay nobody's moving back maybe they need a little extra time I'm not going to close the breakout rooms just yet it's just a little nicer thing to do so as I say, finally, I just want to show you um, the co-host thing. So if I click on participants here, I can see that John and Mary are co-hosts. So that's just because I already made them co-hosts previously, but I'm just going to just for now. Um, uh, let's say um, John is now a um, normal participant. Mary is a co-host. So Mary maybe is my co-facilitator. Mary cannot control the breakout rooms. She can move into the breakout rooms and move around them, but she can't do broadcasts. She can't close the breakout rooms. She can't rename the breakout rooms. So that's pretty annoying. So let's just say if you were co-facilitating with somebody else, if you were doing all the talking like I am now, you might ask Mary, your co-facilitator, to take care of the breakout rooms. Then later, when Mary's talking, she might want you to do that. So what do you do? This is where, and obviously you have to trust someone here, you have to make them be the host. Now, if I make Mary be the host, I can never um, reclaim that myself again. Mary has to make me be the host. So it's a very dangerous button to click. And in my mind, it's a really silly thing that you can't have two hosts. It's quite annoying. Um, but at the moment, Mary's the co-host, which basically means the only difference between her and a participant is that she um, is able to um, allow participants into the into the breakout rooms or sorry, into the into the Zoom, I should say. She's no control over the breakout rooms. Sorry for saying that wrong. Um, but she's no control over the breakout rooms as a co-host. I have to make her be the host. And if I click that button, which I won't right now, then I'll lose um, the control over the breakout rooms. And this is, as I say, it's a dangerous room or dangerous button. Because let's say, for example, by accident, I made John be the co-host. You can see how it's kind of easy to make him be the host instead of the co-host. If John has no idea how to use Zoom, he may not know how to make me be the host again. And then we're in trouble because I can't do breakout rooms. So that's just one thing to note. Make sure that if you ever let someone else be the host, as in that would be your facilitator who knows about breakout rooms and knows how to make you be the host and back again later. Like I said, maybe this person is talking, this person is in charge of the breakout rooms. Later on, this person is doing the talking and this person is charge of, in charge of the breakout rooms. Um, and um, that's maybe all I have to say. And... I'm just thinking, did I miss anything? Yes, there's one last thing that I forgot to say that I just wanted to um, let you know because it's related to the breakout rooms. This share screen options, if you take the up button here and then click um, advanced sharing options, you can see there we're allowing multiple participants to share. Or, um, so I'm going to just... Um, maybe leave the room and go back to the main room and then I'll also 
show you where I am going to make someone else be a co-host. So, and so there's one last thing I do want to share with you. If you see here, share screen, you take the little up arrow there and then you can see um, the advanced sharing options. We want to make sure that um, you can see one participant can share at a time. That's fine. Who can share all participants? Make sure that that is turned on when the breakout rooms are open. Otherwise, the students won't be able to um, screen share with each other, which may or may not be an issue depending on what you're asking them to do. But that's just a tip if um, you want people to be able to share breakout, to share their screens in the breakout rooms, then you want this option ticked um, here. All participants. Um, and um, I'm going to X that and that is it. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below this video. If you have any tips to share, please let us know as well. Um, maybe I've missed something. And then finally, if you notice that Zoom has updated or if anything is out of date or wrong in this video, please also let us know as well so we can all learn from each other. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.